Hi, I'm Bonnie Tompkins and I work with Pallium Canada as their Compassionate Communities National Lead. Dying is not fundamentally a medical event, but rather a social event that happens in the family and the community. This quote from Dr. Mary Lou Kelly reminds us that community involvement is an essential aspect of end of life care. During this time, it is a chance for people to visit with the dying and people caring for them. Support the end of life care team with food, groceries, supplies, prayer, and care for others in the family, such as children and pets. This support is necessary throughout the dying process. Accompanying the bereaved is equally important after a person has died. So keep checking in with caregivers and family regularly, especially during the first year after a death, with all of the first that family members will go through. As we experienced during COVID-19 pandemic, we could not connect and support the sick and dying with in-person visits. We need to find creative ways to connect. The use of technology made it possible to support caregivers, the dying, and those grieving by using online video conferencing resources. In module one, we learned about the three disease trajectories, the typical path a disease takes from a medical lens, which focuses on physical change. Dr. Murray, a family doctor from Scotland, who is a leader in the field of palliative care worldwide, proposed that dying is a four-dimensional experience that in addition to the physical dimension includes social, psychological, and spiritual dimensions. Understanding these three dimensions is essential for those who support the patient to ensure the patient lives well while dying. Understanding how these three additional dimensions impact a dying person's journey will allow us to understand better what the person is going through, when and how we can support them and their caregivers. There is a link in the take home resources for this module to a video that describes the four dimensional experience. If a person's wish is to die at home, it is essential that an end of life care team, which also includes the medical staff, has a plan in place. The plan will guide decision making, especially if things are not going well. This plan must include a 24-7 contact number for medical staff, especially if the team has concerns about the patient's well-being. The end-of-life care team will strengthen the plan by taking scheduled shifts so that other team members can get some rest, even if they are resting in the house. This idea may be the most challenging part for some caregivers as they may not want to leave the person's side, but taking some time to rest will allow everyone to be present while on this journey. We've included a tool to help you develop an end of life plan in your take home document. In addition to the end of life care team, this is another excellent opportunity for family, friends, parish and community members to get involved and in support. You might be asking yourself, how much support do those facing a terminal illness need? Let's look at this image that shows how much care time is spent with healthcare providers on average in the last 12 months of life. You can see in the blue section that support from the healthcare field makes up roughly about 20% of the care provided. So who provides the other 80% of the care? It will fall mainly on those in the caregiving role unless others create a supportive network to provide care when needed. How does the image change if individuals or groups with whom the patient and caregiver often interacted before the diagnosis become a part of that support team? As you can see, creating a support network can significantly help with the other 80% of the care needed. I want to take a moment to talk about accepting help and offering help since it is the key function of the support network for the patient and care team. When you want to offer help, be specific about the services and the support you are comfortable providing. The reason is asking the person who is providing the care to identify things they need help with could be too much for them. And therefore they might respond with, thank you, but we are fine. So remember to offer specific help 
and no task is too small. Finally, we must respect the wishes of the patient and caregiver. Please remember that friends, family, and neighbors genuinely want to support you. Often, those accepting help feel like a burden. This is not true. By accepting assistance from others, you are allowing them to make a difference during this time. I hope we have shown how community support can positively affect the patient and their care team. In times of need, supporting those around us comes naturally to parishioners, since caring for the sick and dying is what the gospel calls us to do. Before there were sophisticated healthcare centers and advances in medical technology, family, friends, and neighbors were always ready to help the sick and dying. Today, people who live in large urban centers often feel isolated and alone. The movement to get communities engaged again in supporting people dealing with palliative care and end of life is essential. You might be wondering, how do I or we breathe life back into the idea of the community getting involved again? There are things you can do within your parish to support one another. Praying for the sick, taking communion to them, arranging parishioners to make meals for the family, arranging for the priest, to visit the dying person, and offering other help are all ways the parishes can support their friends and neighbors. You can do something in the broader community to empower more people to get involved and create a supportive community. If you are passionate about the power of community and want to explore how your community can take a more active role in supporting patients and their care team, learn about the Compassionate Community Movement at pallium.ca. You can find resources and tools to get you started, along with some Canadian examples of community activities in your take-home document for this session. Remember this, everyone has a role to play in caregiving serious illness, dying, and grief. What supportive role will you play?